Hey guys, welcome back to DCS. So today's video is going to be a very short tutorial on how to make a JTAG, the most simple, the most basic form of JTAG within DCS world. So with the introduction of the DCS F18C Hornet and, and, and the uh, AGM 65Es, I wanted to go ahead and create a JTAG, but I didn't know how. So I went on YouTube and I looked through some tutorials and none of them were really that good. Uh, most of them were talking about how to create a more complicated JTAG, something that requires modding and scripting and so on and so forth. So I will try and show you guys how to make the most basic form of JTAG, something that anyone with, uh, with just DCS World can do. So it's not going to require any modding, any sort of scripting, nothing like that. So just the most basic uh, form of JTAG. Now guys, the problem is that in DCS World, there is no uh, JTAG ground force like unit so you cannot just uh, like take a JTAC unit and put it down you're going to have to take uh, a another ground unit and give it JTAC powers basically so let's go ahead and show you how how that's done so over here I have a platoon of T-72s platoon of T-72s four T-72s so we're gonna come over here click this tank icon Right, and you're gonna make sure that it's gonna be on your country's side or on in on your coalition. Uh, basically, the JTAC has to be on the same coalition as you, the, the aircraft that you're flying. And you come down here to armor, and then you select the M2A2 Bradley. Now you could also select an M1 Abrams. You could uh, some people select the uh, tow equipped uh, Humvee. Normally, I go for the uh, M2A2 Bradley. So let's go ahead and select that. Now, as I said, there is no forward air controller or JTAC or the uh, joint terminal attack controller unit per se. So you're going to have to choose something else and give it the powers of a JTAC. Now, we went ahead and selected our Bradley. Now we come here to advanced uh, waypoint action. Right. You can delete that. And then you click here, add, perform task, start, ta uh, start in route task down here select FAC engage group so basically forward air control engage group now group this group right here is the group that you want the JTAC to uh, to uh, designate as a target for you so I'll go ahead and uh, choose the T-72 platoon now guys uh, I've named this platoon T-72 platoon so if you were to choose something like your units it might be called something else but just to make sure that it is that the JTAC is looking at the correct unit make sure that 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 this blue line is actually pointing towards whatever it is that you want to set as a target so next down here weapons option now you can leave this in auto basically if you leave it in auto you're leaving it up to the JTAC to decide what type of weapon uh, it will call for uh, it, it would normally be based on what whatever it is that you have and let's be honest, it's mostly guided stuff. So you can go ahead and select guided. Now within guided, there are subgroups as well. Guided bombs, ASMs, ATGMs, so on and so forth. So I'll just leave it in guided. Now over here, very important, designation. Again, you can leave it in auto. And the JTAC will decide what type of designation it will do for you. So you can, you can do Willy Pete, white phosphorus, IR pointer, laser, combination of white phosphorus and uh, and laser now normally if you're going to be dropping gbu 12s or agm 65 es and stuff like that you'd, you'd want it to you want the target to be painted by laser so you'd select laser now data link i have no idea what that does probably that works uh, with the ka-52 type aircraft that can uh, do data linking or the a10c and over here you've got the call sign for the uh, jtac now you've, you can choose uh, various different really cool uh, uh, call signs. Normally I'll leave it in X-Man, but you've got Dark Knight, Warrior, Pointer, Whiplash, Firefly, anything really. Just I'll just normally leave it in, in X-Man. And over here you've got the frequency, the radio frequency for that JTAC. You can set it to whatever. Normally it's uh, an, on 133. Modulation, AM, FM. I normally leave it in AM. I don't play around with that. So frequency 133, modulation AM. Now you need to go ahead and plug this into your, uh, um, basically type this into your aircraft, right? So that's done. We're going to click add for another option. We're gonna come down here. We're going to set option. 
rules of engagement weapons hold now why do we want to do that because this guys this is a uh, an m2 bradley an m2 bradley is very capable of actually knocking out t-72s with its tow missiles and we don't want to do that we, we don't we don't want our jtac to, to destroy these targets we want to destroy them so we're going to tell him to hold his weapons and we're going to add another option come down here and select perform command we're going to come down here to invisible now we don't want our Bradley to be visible to the enemy to these guys or any other unit enemy unit out there so we don't want it to get destroyed and as a fourth option you can also add immortal so basically the unit cannot be taken out now you can choose either or invisible or immortal in my opinion invisible and immortal both good options okay so now the target is if you look over here uh, FAC engage group right so and then we got rules of engagement weapon hold it's invisible and it's also immortal right so our Bradley is ready to go now this is a ready fully functional most basic JTAC right here now you guys might be wondering why do I have the map in satellite view you can go over here and go back to the uh, normal sort of uh, F10 DCS map now the reason why I go to satellite guys is just so I can see every single ridge so for example say if I didn't want to place my JTAC here on this flat uh, desert I wanted to place my JTAC somewhere let's say here right on this ridge I need to make sure that this JTAC has a clear line of sight to the target if the JTAC does not have a clear line of sight uh, it will not work it will not work for you you will not be able to designate any targets for you would not be able to laze any targets now let's say that I had it on the uh, normal map see you couldn't you, you you won't be able to tell the different rid ridges that well so make sure you're in satellite view so yeah you, you can actually see these ridges right here and if you hover your mouse pointer on that ridge down here it will tell you the altitude basically so this ridge right here is 117 uh, meters above above sea level this ridge over here 132 146 and our JTAC is at 166 so he has he or she has a clear line of sight to the target over there and also it's important to keep the targets within this uh, yellow engagement circle for whatever it is that uh, you decide to designate as a JTAC now sometimes it works even if they're out outside the circle but it's just safer to keep it that way now you guys might be asking how come you cannot choose an infantry uh, soldier as a uh, as a uh, JTAC now you can go ahead and do that but however the um, the infantry soldiers at the moment in DCS don't work well as a JTAC they will give you guidance they will give you talk on but they will not be able to laze for you now I guess it's because they don't have lasing equipment, they don't have optical sights or whatever. But the uh, I found that the M2A2 Bradley works well. You can use the LAV as well, and you can use the uh, the, the uh, tow equipped uh, Humvee as well. I guess you could use an M1 Abrams as well. But we'll use the uh, M2 Bradley. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.